All right, guys, welcome back. Um, I just painted this picture and uh, I'll be showing you how I did it in the following video. Uh, I made a slight error. I forgot to use my wireless mic, so it's going to be poor sound quality, but seeing or being that it's my first time, uh, I think you guys can deal with it. So stay tuned and uh, see you around. So. I'm going to start out by showing you what paints I have on the palette here. I have my titanium white, Prussian blue, Van Dyke brown, Glycerin crimson. You can see it's a little runny here, but it's no big deal. It's a highlight color. Cadmium yellow and yellow ochre. And today we're going to paint something easy. <clears throat> so since it's such a small, can small canvas, I have a 12 by 12 here. I'm just going to paint something simple today. We're going to start out with, uh, let's make a... We're going to take and load the brush here with a little bit of lizard and crimson. We don't want too much, just a little bit. And you want to put that on nice and even on your brush. So you tap it onto the thing, tap it onto your palette. So it looks like that. I don't know if you can see that or not. And we're going to put a little light spot in the sky and just see what happens today. Make your X strokes. We're going to kind of go around in a circle here. We're going to put a little, little bit of a red into the sky. Let's see how that looks. Okay. The reason I started on the small canvas is because I want to see how this whole process works. Go back and check it and see if it's worth even using. I don't know. So I want it a little bit brighter. So I go back and I get a little bit more. Just a little bit. Well, not too much. A little too much there. Tap it on the palette. Go back to your middle point and work outwards. As you see, I'm already kind of creating a horizon line. Don't really matter. You can kind of go below it however you want to. We're going to cover that up most likely anyway. I'm going to go up a little bit here. I want it to be nice, nice and bright here in the middle. Crisscross patterns, X strokes. All right. So we're going to go with the same brush, it doesn't matter this time around, and we're going to get a little bit, a little bit of your Prussian blue. Just the tiniest amount, it's very strong. So we're going to go ahead and tap that on there. Like I said, just a little bit. You don't want to, really, it's, blue is the strongest color out of all of this. Tap it on. And we're going to start from the corners, because we're creating an optical illusion. You think it's a painting, but it's an optical illusion. And you, when you have darker corners, your eye automatically gets pulled into the middle, creating that effect that we're looking for, which is, you know, 3D in depth. So, X strokes again, you go across the top. By the way, I'm only using a one-inch brush, a smaller brush. Forgot to tell you guys, and gals. And you don't want your sky to be uniform. You want it to be a little bit, you know, some holes in it, because that's what creates interesting effects as well. So... I put that brush down. I'm gonna grab myself a clean, dry, two-inch brush. I'm gonna break it up. I got, as you can see, I got a very wrinkly shirt on, but it's for painting, so it doesn't really matter as much. Yeah. <laughs> and now I'm gonna take with the brush, and I'm gonna blend these two areas together as well as blend this guy down. So the first thing you want to do is you wanna, when you blend these two together, you wanna stay in the light and then go into the dark, never in reverse. And if you go the other way, you'll drag that blue into your red and you really don't want that so much. So I'm going to blend over top this red and you can blend as much as you want depending on you know how, how you'd like it to look. Some people want it softer, some people want it more you know a little bit more of a standout but we're going to make a nice sauce guy today. See it blending, you want it to blend right here where the two come together. You want it to soft to be nice and soft, to soft is the correct way of saying it. To be nice and soft so that the, the, that the, that the transition is nice and gradual. So always take a step back and look at it, see what you got. We're gonna go across there. I think I'm gonna make it a little darker in the corners. I don't like that so much. A little darker across the top. 
And as you work your way down, it, it mixes with the media model I have on here, which is like a, like I said, a Bob Ross product, which is called liquid white. And when it does it, it mixes with the white and it automatically gets lighter towards the horizon, which is what happens anyway. If you, like I said, go out into nature and check it out. So we're going to go back to this paintbrush again. And right now I'm going to set my palette down, grab your paper towels. We're going to clean it off a little bit. Not too much, just a little bit. And we're going to blend a little bit more again. There you go. So now we have your nice, even, easy sky. So at the same time we're making a sky, we're going to do a little bit of a lake today. Take a little bit of the blue. Just the, just the slightest tap of the green. We're going to make a little bit of an interesting greenish blue color. Mostly blue. But we want it, because if you look at water, you think it's blue. But it's really not. We're going to make it our own. And by the way, always mix colors, or if you can, mix colors as much as you can, because making your own colors is much more interesting than using the ones that already exist. Now we're going to go to create water. First of all, you have to make it flat. So 90 degrees in this direction. We're going to come from the outside in, and we're also going to come from this side from the outside in. Okay, start from the bottom, working your way up, because once again, we're trying to create the effect that it fades into the horizon. So we're coming straight across. Working our way up. Do the other side. Put a little bit more on there. It's always good to go back and make it darker, not the other way around. Start light, work your way dark. It's easier. Trust me. So I'm going to come across again. I like it. It needs to get darker. Mix a little bit more, not too much because that will get really dark really quick. Okay, mix it up good though. Okay, do it again. Go across, there we go. Going up, so it fades into nothing. Once again, the other side, straight across, 90 degree angle, because water is flat, if you know anything about it. And we're going to leave this little bit of light in the middle, which is going to create like a effect of like light coming across there. So, I'm going to give myself another. I clean all my brushes at the end, but in between you can clean your brushes too. Depends on how many you have. So, now I'm going to take this brush, a clean, dry two inch brush, and I'm going to go across the whole thing and kind of set that into the painting a little bit. So, now we have the sky and your water. So, what's next time? Well, I'll tell you. <laughs> we're going to make some clouds. Today, we're going to make some easy clouds. We're going to just simply get a little bit of red, just a little bit, the tiniest bit. I'm going to come into the white because we want that red to pop against the background. What you want to do is you want to lay it on nice and thick. There's that red. It was in the corner of the brush. And you want to put it on. I have here, I think it's a number three fan brush. I don't want to lie. I don't think it says it on there, but this is my favorite type of fan brush. You get control, but you also don't get too much control. I like using fan brushes to put on clouds. But you can use whatever you're comfortable with. So let's get a little bit more on there. Not too happy. Loading the brush is important. Make sure you get a nice bit of paint on here. Now when doing your clouds, it's very important that you keep moving. Make little circles and keep moving. Don't stay in one spot and do circles. Then it, it just won't look right. You're trying to make an effect once again. So I'm going to put my brush on and we're just going to put some color into the sky. Don't be afraid to get in there and move around. All right, the other, the other corner of the brush still has paint on it, so we're going to come over here and do some. Don't be afraid to move, move around. All these little things that comes up in here, no big deal. You're going to go, oh, there's a lot of paint there. Some, some like, uh, oops, what am I trying to say there? <clears throat> some places you want a lot of paint, some places you want a little bit of paint, and some places you don't want any paint. Also important, make sure your clouds kind of go off the canvas, you know what I mean? Because it looks a little more natural that way. All right, put a little bit of one coming down here. All right, there's some clouds. Simple, easy. Put a little bit more here. All right, now, once again, you take your clean brush. If it's not, if you don't think it's clean, once again, take your paper towel, dry it off, clean it off. However you want to say that. 
And what we want to do here is we want to, matter of fact, let me pick this up. We're going to fade out the bottom of the clouds into the sky. Do not touch the tops. And go quick, quick over it. Don't, don't spin too long because you'll turn it into like, a, like Ross said in the cotton balls. Just take a corner and move on out. Boom. Move. Take the corner of the brush. This very little corner right there. I don't know if you can see it. Just get the bottom of the clouds. Make sure you clean it off in between. That way you don't drag any excess paint onto your painting. Boom. There's your clouds. A little bit more there. Now we're going to do a nice little move where you sweep up very lightly. Grab it and pull it up. You want to make the top of these nice and fluffy. There you go. A little bit more there. And now, to set these clouds in the sky, you go very, very lightly. You hold it and you just go straight across flat. There you are. Some very simple clouds. All right. The next thing we're going to do is a mountain. And for a mountain, you're going to want a palette knife. And this is what you do. You take a little bit of red, a little bit of blue, and a little bit of brown. About equal parts. And you mix it up. I'm going to put a little more brown in there. Don't be afraid to pick up the paint. Excuse me, I wasn't showing you correctly. Pick up the paint and flip it over. Now you want to pull that out completely flat. Take your knife and go across like this. And we're going to put a mountain in here. I wouldn't always center it. I would take it a little bit off to the center. It gives it a little more interesting effect. So when you make a mountain, just go ahead and plop it on there. Get some more color. Try not to have too many straight lines. Because nature really doesn't have many straight lines. Oops. Get this far a bit. And you want the top of the mountain to be more distinct than the bottom. We could care less what's going on actually here. Scrape off the excess, make a little bump there. We're gonna make a good size one here. Have fun with this. This is this is one of my favorite things to paint. This is why I'm showing you guys. It's one of my favorite things to paint. Get that edge. Take off the excess. Who knows? Maybe it has a little bump here again. Okay. And you want to scrape it. You can actually hear it if you listen. You can hear me scraping against here. All right. That's a pretty good mountain. I'm sure you guys are thinking, oh, there's not much of a mountain. Well, you'll see. I'll show you what I'm going to do. I'll wipe off the palette knife onto my paper towels. Now I'm going to take any old dirty brush. I like a little more control, so I use the one inch. And you want to take this mountain, you want to pull it down. You want to pull it down and blend it out at the bottom. You want to get that excess paint off of there because we're going to put our highlights on there. So, what we're going to do here is a very cool trick that I like to do. Take any old brush you got. I got a nice round brush here. Doesn't matter. And we're going to tap the bottom of this mountain. And we're going to create a nice misty area. It's very important. Because when you create a misty area, you create depth. You'll see what I mean in a minute. When I go to put the next piece below this mountain, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Okay? Wipe it off a little bit. It's a paper towel that you want to sweep up. This is a round brush in case you guys are wondering. I don't really use them too much. But for this, it don't really matter over here. We're going to cover that up anyway. Tap up. Make sure you observe the angles. Blend it down a little bit, sweep it up. See it's dirty, take it off. We create a nice bit of. So, as you can see now, we have a we have the base color for your mountain. Now we're going to put some snow on there. You can do different kind of colors and stuff. We're going to put some snow on there. So once again, you pull your white out flat. Take a little bit. Now this is a very tricky, delicate move. This one is tricky. 
What I like to do is I like to balance it between my middle finger and my thumb using the index finger as a guide. And what you want to do is you want to kind of place it on there almost flat and you want to pull it across at a sweeping motion and you want to paint the break. You don't want to push it. You want to do just a very delicate touch. Let me go to the corner up here. And what you did, you get this cool breaking of the snow effect. That's what you want. So what we're going to do is so that's going to look. I'm right-handed, so I like to, for the most part, I like to make my highlights come from the right. If you're left-handed, most people like them to come from the left. Some people like doing the the opposite of the highlights. I can't think of the name of that right now, but the back side of the highlights. And <clears throat> first, I like doing the highlights first. Whatever makes you happy. So we're going to go and highlight this mountain now. Any bail it can move, drag, very easy. All right, we're going to make this mountain round out a little bit. I know I'm making noises. It helps. I don't know why. I think it puts you in the mood. <laughs> I'm going to take this ridge and we're going to pull it down here a little ways, just for fun. Extend that ridge line. You don't want the lines to be too straight, so I'm going to come back here and kind of zigzag them up a little bit, drag it down. All right. I'm going to take and put just a little bit of a highlight back here on that peak. Make sure you get it correctly on there. Make sure you come all the way to the edge. All right. Clean off your knife. Now we're going to mix the shadow side. That's the word I was looking for. Now this is important. Just a little bit of blue. Just a little bit. We're going to mix it down here. A little bit of blue and mostly white. That's still too much blue. A little white. If you ever look at it, if you ever take a painting, or excuse me, take a picture of the mountains if you're down there in the Alps or the Rockies or the Andes or the Himalayas, wherever you happen to be in the world, you'll see that. So, a little bit more blue. Drag it out flat, do the same thing, a little roll on the edge, and you come in the opposite angle. Follow the angle of the mountain, super important. We're gonna to touch, make sure you guys can see this. We're gonna come down. Okay, we're gonna to touch. I'm right-handed, once again, my elbow might be in the way, I hope not. We're gonna to touch, and we're gonna come down. Okay, a little bit more. Once again, we're going to come on this big mountain here. A touch, and very lightly, once again, very lightly, sweep it down. There you go. Pretty good. Here. Sweep it down. All right. So. That's floating in the air back there. No biggie. Well, I'm going to take a clean dry brush again. And we're going to work our way up the angles. Ever so slightly. Once again, creating this misty effect. Mm -hmm. Backside as well. Creating that misty effect. That's what we want. And that kind of, when you do things like that, it sets the mountain back. So now we're going to mix up. We're going to take, excuse me, I'm a little confused here. We're going to take some brown. This is Van Dyke brown once again. And we're just going to put straight Van Dyke brown and just a bit of white. I want it to be very light, maybe a little bit of that, maybe a little bit of that, excuse me, I wasn't showing you guys, kind of getting, trying to get used to this, a little bit of that background color from the mountain, a little bit of brown, put it down here, we're going to mix that up, and we're going to do, we're going to get quite a bit on here, don't be afraid to get a little bit on there, a little bit of white, what's this one, 
I have to put the rest of that mountain color in there, no big deal. I'm not going to use it anymore. And you want to get a nice, good pile of dark paint. Matter of fact, let me get some more. I'm going to need a lot more than that. We're going to use it up later. Don't worry about it. We're not wasting anything. As you see, my yellow has done moved. He's moving down. Gravity got a hold of it. All right. So, we got that all clean off your knife again. Always try to keep your stuff clean. Now we're going to take, I think this is a number six. And we're going to go back and forth. And we're going to load up this brush nice and thick with paint. Okay, and we're going to make a nice tree line. So the reason we, like I said, the reason we put this shadow area in there, excuse me, this misty area is to create depth. So we're going to take this brush after I loaded it back and front. And we're going to just go straight up 90 degrees and we're going to tap in some trees. The tops of the trees are very important. Make sure you use that misty area to your advantage. When the paint runs out, flip it over. And you'll see it's running out again. All right, get some more paint. Load it up again. Do it again. Remember, this is further in the background, so we don't need as much detail as in the foreground. Make sure it goes up and down. Try to be random. Super important. I think I'll say super important about 50 times here, loading the paint up brush again, if you're wondering. Gonna go up. Okay, we got some nice tops of the trees. Make sure we connect it. And we'll go over here a little bit farther. Over right here a little bit. Right in the middle there. That's good. That's a nice tree line. It looks very dark. Maybe it is a little dark, but no big deal. So we're gonna take our old trusty brush that I used to fade out the mountain. We're gonna do the same thing. We gotta tap the bottom. Just tap it, tap it, tap it. Just a little bit. Try to get all that paint together on the bottom, but keep the separation at the top. All right, very cool. All right. So what are we gonna do now? I say we paint a little, a little bit of grass. So I'm going to take this paintbrush, it's a little dirty, I'm going to grab a li this little bit of blue and a little bit of this moving yellow, put it here, and we're going to make a nice green color, a little more blue. And we're going to make a nice green grass color. Okay, so we're going to use just the edge of the brush, make sure you leave a little distance between the bottom of your trees and where your grass starts, and you touch it. And you just touch it. Okay. Mix it up a little bit. I had to make a little yellower this time, maybe. You know what I mean? A little more yellow. And you go a little bit below the grass where the dark is. And you make your next line. Try to make it not so even. Everything in nature is not very even. So you don't see how that line is too straight there? Kind of mix it up a little bit. Red. I'm gonna put some yellow flowers back here. Not too much. A few, a few here, maybe. All right, cool. I'm gonna take a little more of that dark color, just a little bit. Let me see what brush did I have the dark color on. I had it on a fan brush. I will put a little bit more on a fan brush, no big deal. A little bit more on the fan brush, and we're going to add a little bit more dark color here. It's going to do something really interesting. Okay. Now we're going to take a clean brush, very important. And we're going to do the coolest thing in this paint job, this painting that you can do. Wait a minute, let me add another layer of grass. I've done skip the step. Let's go ahead and change color. Let's put a little yellow ochre in there this time. Let's see if you can see that. Sorry. Once again, I'm not used to it. Now we got a different color. We're going to put another layer of grass in here. Leave some shadow in there. Contrast is important. It's more important than you would think, especially at the beginning. So now, like once again, that's what I want to do. I skip the step. We're going to create reflections. So what you do, clank, um, dry clean brush, grab the bottom, pull it straight down 90 degrees. Straight down, you want to pull it just a little bit. Pull it down. Okay, once you have that, 
think that's reasonably straight. <laughs> Sweep across this way. Very light touch. Lighter than when you did the clouds in the sky. And you have instant reflections. We'll do a simple one today. Now we're going to put a little water line in. A little white. Pull it out flat. And you just cut it in. And this one has to be 90 degrees to your canvas. Super important. 90 degrees to the water. That way it doesn't look like the water is going to I don't know, pour out the side or whatever. Make sure you get a nice little bit of white paint on there, just the littlest bit. And go in here. Put a little line in here. Looks like the water or something's moving. It gives a little bit more of an effect. If it gets too much, just rub it out. Like that. Rub it out. Boom. Uh, let's put a little bit more here. There we go. Cool. So, now we're going to get a big pile of dark paint and we're going to create the flow down. Let me see. Take a knife. Don't be afraid. We already have a pile here. We're going to grab that. We'll grab that up. Put it here. We're going to get brown, blue, and we're going to make a big dark. A little bit of red too. Doesn't matter. Just dark. Because we're going to need some of the way up there. We're going to make some trees and some bushes and stuff. There we go. Clean the knife off again. Now we're going to take this as my highlight brush. I need my dark brush. I don't have one yet, so I'll make one. Got myself a nice one inch. My dirty one inch, as you can see, is my background brush. I'm going to load that paint up real good on here, and we're going to make some trees. So, this color should be darker than that color. Very important. Um, we're gonna start from down here. We're gonna make some bushes. Get a think like a bush. Sounds silly, but it's very true. Think like a bush, think like a tree. like bushes that you're already going to put. Now you can almost already see them. Just checking the time. There's another bush line. Come on on up. Try to make it irregular. Like I said, once again, nature is not perfect. What we're going to do is we're going to frame in this picture and bring the foreground up. So oh, you just covered up that mountain. No big deal. Think like a tree. <laughs> Run out of paint a little bit. Gather it up in a pile again. The paint's rather expensive, so don't be, don't be afraid to gather it up in a pile again. Load her up in the brush. Leave some spots, some holes in the sky. That'll come in handy. Down here. Just gonna kind of brush it in a little bit. Finish up that background paint. Waste not one not, right? I know that this is rattling and I'm sure it's bugs you. But it's the best one I know of. Alright, boom. So we got that. Now we're gonna take. This is a brush I didn't show you before. I like using it. This is a three-quarter flat brush. And we're going to go straight through the Van Dyke Brown. Straight through it. And we're going to load up this brush and make it pointy. If I can get it there. Let's see. I might have to get some more paint. We'll see. Load it up. Get it nice and pointy. Then we're going to start here. We're going to make a tree trunk. Getting thinner and thicker at the bottom. There's one. Give her a little branch here and we'll make this go out of the painting. A little branch here. A 
put another one on this side, same thing. This time we're going to start a little thinner. Do it again. All right. We're going to go ahead and put some <clears throat> little branches on. This is the tricky part. Let me get my, oh, excuse me, get my paint thinner. Take your liner brush, paint thinner, go into your brown. And you swirl it around. You make it nice and thin. You want it nice and thin. Nice and thin. See how it runs? That's what you want. Then you want to twirl your brush to a point. We're going to make some branches. I don't know if you can see that. But we're going to make some branches. Maybe I can lighten it up, but let me put a little bit of white on it. Have a little bit of the white. We'll do it like this. And add it to this. Still keeping it dark. Should pop a little more so you guys can see it better. I'm a paint thinner, I like it really thin. Works better that way. If you ask me. Branches. We'll go put some white ones in there for fun. You know, there's maybe this tree is different than the rest of it. Let's do it this way. Maybe it has a fungus. <laughs> there you go, maybe you can see the branches. More, more, more paint. A little weird, but I like it. Doesn't matter. That's the most important. Just have fun with it. There you go. Put as much branches or not <clears throat> as you'd like in the painting. But we're going to highlight the trees. We're going to make some more green. I got still a little bit more blue here. And that's a nice, make a nice, beautiful dark green. As you come forward, you want your things to be more bold. Maybe a little brighter. Okay. We're going to go ahead and make some nice green. Now this is important. When you highlight, don't overdo it. Don't use much. Use a lot and think like a tree. Think like a tree would look. Use a lot of contrast. In other words, not as much highlight as you would think. So once again, we're not painting the tree, we're painting the effects of what a tree would look like. Get a little spot there empty. Ah, these branches have a little bit of yellow on the top. Don't matter, go for it. Have fun with it. Do the other side now. Too. Expand that a little bit. Try not to look so. Don't make it look so uh, like you're tapping and it's evenly spaced. You want it to look completely random the best you can. All right. Now we're going to take a little. Now we're going to go ahead and create some bushes. We're going to do some. We're going to do a nice strong yellow but yoker. <laughs> Yellow ochre bush with a little bit of yellow. Bushes, you do them from top to bottom, back to front. So let's go ahead and put a bush in here. Let's go ahead and let's put a little extra tree here. Something like that. Let's see what it turns out to be. That's good. A little more yellow. We'll go ahead and in here now why not let's brighten it up reds are good in the foreground too by the way if i didn't say that which i haven't try to see it before it happens so let's go with a straight yellow here try to mix and match them a little bit one more yellow yellow ochre Very 
simple painting. Nothing too special. Okay. Once again, we're going to take our liner brush. I'm going to go through some straight white this time. Looks like there's a little blue in there, so what? And I forgot to highlight the trees. No big deal. I'll highlight them in a little bit. Put a little bit of white on this side of the tree. In the trunk, just a little bit. That paint nice and thin. Since the light's coming in from the right, we gotta do this side of this tree. Right. Just a little bit. Just make it stand out. I made a mistake, but no big deal. I'm gonna dull that down a little bit because it's a little bit too distinct big you know coming around it gets darker as it comes around to get into the effect that you want this side the same then just take a step back and look at that ah pull this down a little bit hmm this doesn't look very good so we'll drag it up and we'll throw a highlight on that joker make it look right Highlight brush, where did you go? Oh, where did you go? There you are. Go ahead and put a little different highlight right there. There you go. Never saw it. The same thing here. Once again, we're going to get some straight, straight, straight white this time. Hopefully, no blue in it. We'll go from the top. Get it all mixed out there. There you go. And we're going to go ahead and put a little bit of stems in here. Some branches and things. Into the dark areas coming into the light. It looks best that way. A little paint there. Spin it, like I said, once again, spin it, get a nice point coming out of your areas here. Once again, put as many or as little as you want in here. All personal, all about your expression, like I've been saying. Coming out of there. All right. I think we have a finished painting, a very simple one. Go ahead. Get that liner brush since you got it out. Get yourself a nice bit of paint on it. Go ahead and sign your name in the corner. I hope you had fun, and I'll see you around. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe.